How could Satan leave perfection? Will we? Satan obviously dwelled in the state of perfection. He dwelled in the state with God before the creation and foundations of the earth and the universe. And so we know that there was some sort of time period in which it was just God and angelic beings and so forth. And Satan had lived within this state of perfection. He knew God. But what had happened was is he allowed uh, envy to take root. He began to see that God had blessed him as basically um, the second best person um, or creature that he's ever created um, because God alone is infinitely above all. He transcends all. He deserves glory and worship. And Satan was obviously the most beautiful of all the angels. So Satan began to think and become envious. Why does God deserve all the praise? This is me. This is how I look. God has made me wonderful. Why don't things praise me? And at some point, there was some sort of free will that God had given Satan uh, to be able to understand um, and have the reflecting thought that, why does God deserve all this? Don't I? And so... Um, Satan had fled perfection because he had never tasted death. He had never tasted sin before. All he knew was perfection. And obviously, we know that uh, a third of the angels went with him when he um, fled. And uh, there was the great battle in the heavenly realms. But two-thirds of the angels stayed with God. Now, obviously, in a perfect state, it doesn't mean... Starting out with a perfect state doesn't mean that you'll automatically flee, right? So... Satan had just had this uh, innate thought process and desire because he was the most beautiful angel. <clears throat> now, will this ever happen to us? The answer is no. Once we go to heaven, God is going to take away our sin. He's going to wipe away every tear from our eye. We're not going to have the desire to want to go out and sin because we ourselves have tasted death already. We know what sin and evil is like, and we want nothing to do with it. Nonetheless, we struggle in this life. We struggle um, to do as God desires and as he commands. But, you know, we persevere in the faith. We, when we fall down, we get back up because we're righteous men and women covered by the blood when we have believed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and repented of our sins. And the Holy Spirit continues to sanctify and help us through that process. But once we get to heaven, we're not going to be looking back and saying, Oh God, can I indulge in, you know, my lusts and so forth. We won't even consider that because what we desire right now is to be with God and to be in a perfect state that we're free from sin and evil. Because we as born-again believers, we hate sin. We want to get away from that. And therefore, once we're in heaven, we're going to be blessed with that. We're going to uh, know that we have tasted death and we have done those things, but we're not going to want to do anything with those things anymore. So therefore, we will never fall back into a sinful state once in heaven. But Lucifer, he never experienced this sort of thing. So uh, even though he was in a perfect state, he, want, he began to become prideful and arrogant. He envied what God had. And so this, this sort of um, evilness, because evil is nothing in and of itself. It's simply a privation of good. Uh, evilness had taken root, and Satan was the first to bring about evil um, and then to enact on it, and obviously from evil comes all the sin and so forth. So um, how could Satan have done that when he was in perfection? He did it because he saw himself as deserving of the same worship as God. He saw himself as equal with God and that just was not the case. And no one will ever be equal to God. It is only God who is the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who is beyond all, who has created all, and who loves all. And may all come to know him in order that we may dwell in heaven for an eternity in perfection and purity.